Alberta's oil sands. One of the largest proven oil reserves in the world. The largest ongoing industrial project in the world. Generating tens of thousands of high paying jobs. Billions of barrels of oil. And potentially trillions of dollars pumped into Canada's economy long term. The oil sands will continue to grow with global demand for oil expected to increase 40% by 2035. But there are big challenges. Massive toxic tailings ponds, enormous land, water, and animal disruptions in Canada's boreal forest, and a very carbon intensive extraction process where you need to burn natural gas and petroleum coke to get oil that we burn again in our cars. The Alberta oil sands have become a symbol to environmentalists of humanity's dependence on oil and the lengths we will go to meet that dependence. Industry and government are spending hundreds of millions of dollars on research and development. New technologies and practices are emerging to reduce the environmental impact of the oil sands. To industry's credit, they have reduced the intensity of greenhouse gas emissions by 26% since 1990. But as many industrialized countries, including the US, are reducing carbon emissions to fight global warming, Alberta's emissions are expected to rise eight times with planned expansions unless transformative technologies can be found. Toxic tailings ponds, displacing more than 170 square kilometers of forest, are one of the most contentious and visible environmental issues around the oil sands. These large holding basins contain the liquid mine waste after the oil is separated from the sand. They have more than tripled in size since 2005 and will remain on the landscape for decades. Industry touts new technologies that will reduce tailings ponds and greenhouse gas emissions in the future. But a study by a respected environmental think tank shows fewer than half of the companies actually reduce emissions. Mostly, they pay a carbon levy because it's cheaper. As the oil sands industry grows, the majority of new operations will use underground steam processes that extract the oil underground. Without a need for open pit mines or giant tailings ponds, these technologies offer a greener image for the oil sands. But it takes more energy from natural gas to get the oil out of the ground than traditional mining. And an underground leak near Cold Lake, Alberta resulted in one company being forced to drain a lake. The oil sands are a massive, long-term project that spans into the next century. It will take decades to mine the oil and decades to dry the tailings and reclaim all the land. Trees just don't grow overnight. The harsh reality is the world's demand for energy is growing, especially in emerging markets. And the oil sands will give Canada and the world a long-term, stable supply of energy for hundreds of years. But First Nations people in Alberta can feel the effects of a booming oil sands expansion right now. Some are left wondering if elevated cancer rates are due to pollution or other factors. The development of the oil sands has become a contentious issue with a public image problem the world over. That public image affects Canada and the world. Because if other countries won't buy Alberta's oil, then the oil sands won't be able to expand. In this in-depth interactive multimedia series, you will learn about the issues around the Alberta oil sands. You will go to Edmonton, where the industrial heartland produces 75% of Western Canada's transportation fuel. You will take a trip up Highway 63 to Fort McMurray, the definition of a boom town, and meet people who live and work there. You will travel to Fort Mackay, where the oil sands are literally in their backyard, and fly to Fort Chippewan, a small community downstream from the oil sands that has become an international symbol of the battle between nature and pollution 
traditional lifestyles, and a need for employment. So now, where do you want to go?